Hi everybody, this is Professor West. Welcome back. Um, this is our third installment in the C Sharp programming series that I'm creating. And last time we talked about some variables and some input and output statements. This time we're going to be talking about if statements. If statements are extremely important in the programming world because for the first time this gives you the ability to have some control over the flow of the program. What does that mean? What that means is very simple. Remember when I told you that when you hit the run button, it starts with the main function and then it's, it runs each line. So it comes here, it runs this first line, then it's going to run the second line, then it's going to run the third line, the fourth line, the fifth line, and so forth until it's finished. An if statement allows us to run some lines sometimes when a certain condition is met and skip it other times when the conditions are not met. So let me give you a real world example. Let's say you go to buy a lottery ticket and the cashier says, oh, you have to be 18 to buy a lottery ticket. Are you 18? If you are 18, they let you buy a lottery ticket. If you're not 18, they don't let you buy the lottery ticket, theoretically. Some still do, but that's a whole different story. But you understand the point. If you are, then you can, and if you're not, then you can't. And if statements do basically the same thing. So let's get rid of these few lines of code here. And let's start by creating a variable. I'm going to create an integer. I'm going to call it number. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. So I now have a whole number. You know, whole numbers don't have decimal places. Called number. And it's going to be have a value of 0. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to say if. Um, actually, first, before that, I'm going to. I'm going to tell it to enter a number. So I'm going to paste a couple of these lines in in order to try to save some time. So console right line, please enter a number between 1 and 20. And I want to change that so that it says inclusive. So the person knows that one, the number 1 and the number 20 would both be allowed. And then we're going to do a simple read line statement that parses it to an integer and stores it as number, just like we've done before. Uh, I'm pasting some of these lines in because we've already done them enough times that by now you can probably do them on your own, but you can still see them, so there you go. And now, an if statement has three parts. It has the if, the word if, it has the parentheses, and then it has what we call a condition. A condition, in this case, um, here's my condition. Number greater than 20. Now the computer's going to look at this and say if number is greater than 20. This is my test, my condition. If I entered 5, then number is 5, which is not greater than 20, so it's false. If I enter 23, then 23 is, is greater than 20, so it's going to be true. With an if statement, the very next line is what occurs if the statement is true. So, now I need a console right line statement that says, oh, what, did you make a mistake? The number should be 20 or less because I wanted them to enter 1 to 20, not 23, not 29, or anything like that. Let me make myself a little room here. So, <clears throat> by default, only one line will go with this number. So... Let me give you another example here. Quote, that was fun. Let me show you something here. Line my stuff up. Let's save it and let's run this program. Okay, please enter a number between 1 and 20. I'm going to enter 25, which is false. What? Did you make a mistake? The number should be 20 or less. That was fun. Notice both of those lines ran. Let me move over a little bit. Both of these lines ran. Now let's run it. And let's say, please enter a number, let's say 5. That was fun. Notice that this line ran even though it was, it was false. 
So if you want to have multiple parts, multiple lines be a part of this if statement, then you have to do the same thing we did with the main function. You have to add a brace. Oops, my program's running still. Got to stop it. You have to add a brace because remember when I told you braces group things? You have to delete that, that one and move it down here. Now, everything, this if statement, everything between this brace and this brace is part of this if statement. I could have a hundred more lines of code or a thousand more lines of code here between these. And if this is true, they would run. And if not, they would not run. So, what happens if it's false, if the number's not greater than 20? Well, we have what we call an else statement, E-L-S-E. -E. Else does just what it sounds. If this happens, do this, else do this. So I can now add a console right line statement down here that says, Let's change what's in here. Guess it was less than or equal to 20. So what's going to happen now if I run this program, if I enter, say, 5, the first part's going to be false. This part appears false, so these lines don't run. The else line runs this one instead. Guess it was less than or equal to 20. But here's the great thing. If I entered 23, notice that the other line, the line in the else statement here, does not run. These lines, let me move this over again, these lines run because this was true. So these lines run instead of the else. So only this or this will happen. I did not mean to do that. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so only the if or the else will happen, not both. So now, what's the other part? What am I also going to check for? I've already checked now to make sure that it was not greater than 20. So now I need another if, if it's true. If, it, if the number is less than 20, now I need to add another if statement that says number is less than 1. <clears throat> because that's the other thing I want to make sure. I want to make sure that the number is greater than 1 and less than 20. So if the number is greater than 20, I get an error message. If the number is less than 20, I'm going to come down and check to make sure it's still greater than 1. If it's greater than 1, if that's false, I'm going to write line, oops, looks like you entered a number that was not greater than 1. Oh, if that's true. So if my number is less than 1, then it's going to come up and say, oh, it looks like you accidentally entered a number that was not greater than 1. This gives us another chance to test to make sure. So we can, we can have as many as we want. This is called nesting, when you have one inside of another. If the number is greater than 20, these lines would run, and these lines would, this line here would never run. If the number is not greater than 20, these lines would be skipped, and the else would run. Now I can have another else for this one. Else console.writeline let me change what it says in it it's just easier to paste that than keep rewriting it yay you did it and I don't need this line in here anymore so let's run it and see what happens please enter a number between 1 and 20 if I enter 5 yay you did it if I entered zero, oh, it looks like you entered a number that was not greater than one. And if I enter something greater than 20, what, did you make a mistake? It should be 20 or less, that was fun. So as you can see, 
This gives us a lot of control over how our program runs. This is the beginning of games. This is the beginning of um, everything that you do in a program. There's almost never going to be a point in a program where you're not going to use some sort of an if statement for control. So this is very, very important. Um, as you can see, uh, we can have more than one condition. We can have multiple conditions in the same. There's another way that I could do this if I want. Let me make a comment out of this so that you can see them side by side. I could also say if parentheses I could say um, I could have both conditions in one. I could say if number is greater than 20 and which uses two ampersands number is less than one now the computer is not going to like this because remember when i told you there was three parts to the if statement there was the if there was the parentheses and then there's the condition well these parentheses go with this condition now because there's two oops so I need another set of parentheses to surround everything. I need one set that's oh, that was stupid. Okay, I need one set that surrounds everything. So these outer ones tell it if all of this stuff. So what happens is actually let me undo that. That I'll undo. There we go. Let me copy this line. Yeah, you did it. If both of these conditions are true, if the numbers actually I need to change these now that I think about it. Because I'm doing and. So it would have to be if the number is less than or equal to 20 and greater than or equal to 1. So I'm saying if the number is less than or equal to 20 and the number is greater than or equal to 1, output the line, you did it. Let's test that and see if it works now. So theoretically, if I enter a 6, yeah, you did it. This is because this and right here combines this and this. So what happens, this, this is very important. Let me make a little bit of space here. These right here are all within this outer parentheses. If all of this together is true, then this if statement is true. So, for example, if I would have entered something that would made, like if I entered 23, well, this one would have been false, but this one would have been true because the number would have been greater than or equal to one. But because I told it and, it means both, so both would have to be true in order for the whole statement to be true. So if only one of them, if I enter 23, this one would be false, that would make this whole statement a false. If you only care if one or the other is true, then you would use an or statement. In this case here, it would be difficult Less than or equal to 20, and I'll show you why. Or, now in order to get this or command, I had to hit the, hold the shift key and press this button that's directly beneath my backspace key on the keyboard. I had to do that twice. So that's hard one to find sometimes for people, so I like to point it out. Number greater than or equal to 1. Now here's what's going to happen. Let me write this was a bad test and I'll show you why. Let me comment this one and comment this one and let's run this. No matter what I do here, let's say I enter 23. Oh, this was a bad test. Why? Because in this case, it 
no matter what number I enter, it's always either going to be less than 20 or greater than 1. If I enter negative 5, that's less than 20, so this side's going to be true. If I enter a thousand that's going to be greater than one so this side would be true so because I used an or statement here no matter what number I enter it's always going to be true so that's something you have to watch out for as the programmer there are other times when or statements are, are very useful but in this particular case it would not be good um, if I wanted to say like like let's say I was writing a program for a movie um, tickets and I wanted to see if you're under seven years old or older than 55, then you would get a discount. I could do it that way. I could say if it's less than seven and, and if it's greater than 55, give them the discount, that would work. Because, you know, no matter what you enter, if it's between seven and 55, it would, it would be false. This is important that you understand because it's very, very easy to accidentally get a little off on these so anyway um, I was really trying to keep this at 15 minutes or less but I have one more quick thing I want to do real quick and that's with character so let's delete this and let's create a variable real quick called a char and I'm gonna call it um, ch we use that a lot for characters okay I want to in this program test to see if it's an uppercase. So console dot write line. I wasn't gonna do that, but please enter a character. Semicolon con um let's see. CH equals char console dot read and that's how you have to do it if it's a character again I'm accepting it as a character because it's whatever they type in is going to be a character and then I'm assign it to ch so then I could come in and say if char dot and this is this is going back to how I did the console command um, when you put the dot and the right line was one of the tools there's a lot of them in here I could do equals I could do is digit which would check to see if it's a digit or I could do whatever I want in this case I want to do is upper and then in parentheses I put the variable so basically I'm telling it here check to see if ch is an uppercase character and then I could do a simple right line that says hey it's a character it's an uppercase else I could have another test but I'm just gonna assume if it's not an uppercase that it's a lowercase <clears throat> So let's run it. Please enter a character. Okay, H. Why not? And it says, oh, that character is a lowercase. Why? Because it came in and it did a test. It's tested to see if it was uppercase. That was false. So it went to the else and it did what I told it to do down there. Uh, if I run it and do something different, let's say I do a capital F. Now it comes up and it says, oh, the character is an uppercase. So that's just something that you can do. Sometimes um, before you do a test, like if I ask somebody, do you want to continue with this program, yes or no, you know, Y or N, sometimes I want to see if, if what they entered was uppercase or lowercase before I compare it. Because if I compare an uppercase Y to a lowercase Y, it's not going to work. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, segment on if statements. And stick around for the next one. It's going to get a lot of fun. Notice these programs are starting to get a little more complicated. So, all right. Talk to you later.